Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video we're going through Essendon vs GWS game in which Essendon are uh, surprising everyone, um, including myself. Uh, the they, they blew the GWS over in the second half or basically after quarter time. I think it was what 27 to 8 at quarter time, something, something along those lines. And then at full time it was 82 to 62. So uh, what did they score? Something like 74 to 35 after quarter time. So yeah, the Essendon uh, somehow stopped the Orange Tsunami. And I think the Orange Tsunami does heavily rely on the likes of a um, heavily rely on Lockie Whitfield and I think that um, Guelphie had a really impactful role and we saw it last week with uh, James Jordan and it's basically can you just get a guy to tag him but also kick a goal is just the assignment on Lockie Whitfield and Guelphie I think kicked three I think James Jordan kicked goal as well last week so yeah they really are sort of stopping that wave because it then relies on Lockie Ash who is still a good player but he's not all Australian quality and I mean Tom Green did return but he didn't um, have the usual impact and Zach Merritt's second half was ridiculous I think he had something he only had about 50 fantasy points but it was I think it was like almost at 100% efficiency by foot as a midfielder and clearances as well so kind of crazy but anyway before we jump into this video remember to like and subscribe turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and let's get into this recap so Nick Martin 121 but he absolutely butchered it by foot he only went like 82 in Supercoach and he usually is a 1.1 or 1.2 multiplier so to see a 0.75 or so just shows how much he butchered it there was a couple of ones where he just kicked it over a guy out of bounds on the full I think he ended up with five or six clangers yeah it wasn't Nick Martin's uh, best performance per se but um yeah they won so who, who cares basically um yeah he'll be back to his best and we saw this in uh round one I believe when uh, Nick Martin pulled out I think of 93 or whatever but it was like a 50 or 60 in Supercoach so yeah he has these games where he just misses targets but um he'll be back Redmond 120, I thought he had a pretty good game as well. He's starting to develop into, um, and it really, the, the annoying thing is, it seems as if one game it's Redmond, one game it's McGrath, and you cannot pick which game it is. And that's the hard part that you can, you almost can't own either of them just because that um, it's not going to be consistent enough. It's not like uh, Luke, it's, it's like um, Jordan Clark in a way that you can own them, but you're not really going to have them as keepers just because their performance is, um, it, it can have really down games um, comparative that to like a, a Luke Ryan or a, um, I mean, Harry Sheasel's role has changed, but Harry Sheasel when he was, um, when he was in North backline was quite kind of crazy with his output. So, um, and that, I don't know what to do with uh, Harry Sheasel actually when we get to that in the next video or whatever. Um, his is a w really weird conundrum there. Um, Redman, 120 we talked about, yeah, McGrath, 99, I thought he had a really good last quarter here, as you can see, just a lot of just, uh, I mean, when they were kicking around at the end, he did uh, snaffle 24 points quickly, and I think that sort of shows what I'm talking about here, is that they may, uh, Redman and McGrath will almost combine for like 190 points, as I think Redman was also involved in that. Uh, yeah, you can see here Redman as well, he got, what's that, 18, 24, 26 in the last five minutes when they were basically kicking it around, and um, uh, McGrath, 24 points, so they're basically going to probably produce 170 to 190 points between them, but it's just a matter of who gets those splits because, I mean, that is an average of 95 between them, but you could be you could be the one that gets uh, McGrath that averages like 80 or whatever, and McGrath averaging 80 is not a useful pick. Uh, Durham, I think he's one that's really improved. I, did I hear that he was the one that um, was on the Richmond VFL list a couple of years ago? 97 for him, he's been huge. But again, um, he has a couple of big games and a couple of down games. So he's averaging like 75 on the year, which isn't really fancy relevant. Um, but he could be next year. Langford, 93, huge as a goal kicking, um, as a goal kicker. Hind, Merritt, 87 here. You'll see what I mean here in a second when they go to Merritt here. Um, a 51 second half, he had something like... A 70 Supercoach second half. Goldstein, 82. Some of those that went Goldstein, I don't think it was the worst pick, actually, when you had to cover a Ruckman um, at 500k, given that Draper's out. Perkins, Corbo slowed down a lot in the second half. Well, in the last quarter. Good first and third, but did slow down. 
uh, Gresham 78. Guelphy had that role on Whitfield and did really, really well, including kicking um, two goals in the last and then a goal in the third as well. He was on 12 at halftime and then somehow pulled it to a 75. Um, Kelly, uh, Laverde, Parrish, Mackay, Parrish, Cox. Uh, Parrish as well, for those guys that went for him over the likes of an Oliver, um, sort of proves proof in the pudding that you go for Oliver who was um, performing pretty well I know that that stat about um, Parrish performing really well but then again you just don't go for um, at this time of the year you just don't go for the low break even guys that are sort of on the up because uh, you go for the historical guys I guess because like I was saying with um, who was it again uh, there was a guy again that um, that's in the last review as well. You just don't go for these. Uh, I think it was Lloyd Meek. Um, even though Lloyd Meek, you sort of see Parrish and Lloyd Meek, they were sort of on the same spectrum of low break even, sort of not really in the top echelon of guys. Um, I mean, Parrish is, but not, not this year. Um, and you sort of see the difference in how it can fail and how it can really do well. So that's a 50 50. That's already a 50 50. And I'm sure. I'm, pretty confident in saying that there's about a 20% hit rate with um with guys like picking Lloyd Meek. Um, so well done to those that did, but it's a very, very low hit rate. Um, so I'd rather go for the historical guy um, that has explained uh, reasons for their downturn. Um, Stringer, Jones, Hobbs, Davey, uh, Green 98. I thought he did pretty well in the first three. He was a little bit quieter in the fourth. Um, he actually had a 23 in the fourth. Um, but yeah, he just didn't really stand out to be honest in the fourth, but he still ended up with like a 115 super coach, so it wasn't the worst. Briggs, Ash, Cornelio, I thought had a really good start and then faded massively if it will show. Uh, yeah, 27, 26, 18, and 11. Um, Bedford, Haynes, Perryman, Josh Kelly kicked a wonder goal. Lockie Whitfield had a really good um, efficiency night. I think he kicked it by at like 70, uh, 94%, but uh, yeah, just didn't get involved as much. Taylor Hogan, Buckley Ward, Warden is 300th, didn't have necessarily the biggest output game, but he's not really going to have those big output games now that he's like 35 or whatever. Um, Daniels, um, Callahan as well. This is what we talk about with guys like Callahan and a good L3, but can easily pop and fail. So yeah, that sort of explains that. Toby Green's been pathetic this year. Himmelberg, Riccardi, Jones, Stone, Cadman. Um, for those that fielded uh, Cadman, I mean, he put up some points in the last. I think he put up yeah, 20 points in the last, but he was absolutely poor. And then Harvey Thomas is starting to come down to earth, so you've got to get rid of Harvey Thomas and Cadman if you still have them. But anyway, that pretty much is the video. Trying to get through these very quickly, and I see here that we're just about eight minutes, which is, I think, a pretty good time to um, end it at. And I know that most of mine go for like 12, 14 minutes, but uh, just trying to keep them short today. But anyway, that is the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.